Media measurement companies are facing new challenges and opportunities as they keep track of digital media consumption as well as traditional media. Uh, James Manning this week sat down with Nielsen's global president of media products and advertiser solutions, Steve Husker. And uh, an interesting chat that you had with Steve. What, what did you talk to him about? It was great to be able to spend some time with him. One of the things we asked him about in the interview was the, uh, the rise of social media, what that means for uh, people measuring um, you know, uh, information for advertisers. And Steve uh, told us about that. So the thing that hasn't changed is Nielsen's role in, in the, the media value chain, if you like. Nielsen provides information that enables advertisers uh, and media companies to trade advertising. So Nielsen, if you like, provides currency uh, on which people value advertising and trade it. And that really hasn't changed. It, it, we've, we've provided that information uh, directly and then through the AusTam uh, venture here in Australia for many years. And what we're doing is pretty aggressively uh, expanding that presence into online and into mobile. So we have a relationship here with the IAB, the Internet Advertising Bureau, to provide metrics for, for online advertising. And we're doing, making lots of investments in the mobile space to extend uh, our relevance and presence uh, in that growing area. Have you had to fight a bit harder against competitors out there in the digital space? Yeah, whenever any f new form of media uh, uh, arises, if you like, the value chain changes and the players in that value chain change. So we've had a chance to um, we've had a chance to establish ourselves in online, uh, in, both here in Australia and, and internationally, and we're very happy with where we are. We're also very happy with the, the, the couple of offers that we have that both marketers and uh, online publishers are finding very helpful. What is still to come, do you think, in the mobile space? It's something that probably hasn't got anywhere near the what it can offer people. Um, is, is that an area you think is going to really take off? Yeah, I do. I mean, you only have to look at the smartphone usage and the tablet usage here in Australia to know that, that this will be an area of significant growth and it'll be very relevant to the media companies, to the telcos, but also to advertisers themselves. I think what's unknown is what, if anything, the advertising model will be in a mobile environment. We know that there'll be location-based services. We know that there'll be search uh, whether it be searching for restaurants or, or, or different retail outlets. And we know that there'll be m-commerce or mobile commerce. What we're not yet sure about is the extent to which there'll be mobile video consumed uh, uh, through smartphones and, and tablets and so forth. We're pretty confident that will happen. We're tracking it very, very carefully. But we don't know how big that'll be yet. And we also don't know how big display advertising, the likes of which you see in a newspaper or magazines or in websites, we don't know how big that'll be in a mobile environment just yet. Traditional TV viewing continues to be very strong, but are you able to measure what else people are doing when they're watching TV? Yeah, so we, we do. We measure both the reach, so the number, of, the number of audience members who are watching a particular program, whether it be on a TV screen or a PC screen. And we also measure the engagement, the degree to which they remember the brands and the programs that they're exposed to. I think it's very important to remember that TV is actually still growing in the US and in Australia amongst other markets. So the time spent by the average Australian in television is actually going up. It went up by about 12% in 2010. What's happening though is that there's multitasking occurring. So in other words, people are watching TV while at the same time uh, looking at a, a, a tablet or looking at a PC or, a, or another internet device like a smartphone. And the, the occurrences of that happening are actually higher in Australia than most other markets like the US. As a researcher, when you look at the sort of social media that people use, um, are you seeing any trends, you know, anything increasing, any new things around the corner, do you think? Well, there's a couple of things that are happening. The first is that a site like Facebook has about 800 million registered users across the world. So you're talking about a very heavy penetration in the US, very heavy pe penetration in Australia, but heavy penetration in Indonesia and Colombia as well. So it's both developed and developing markets, and that's, that's the first thing. The second thing that we're seeing is increasing access of social networks through mobile devices. So uh, people are using social networks, you know, the heaviest users access social networks many, many times a day from all different, all different occasions. And with that comes uh, greater influence of the social, media, uh, social networks over the videos that people watch, the music that people listen to, uh, and the things that people buy. How powerful is Twitter, and uh, what's its impact commercially? Yeah, I think the beauty of Twitter was just the, um, the focus that that team put on that product. You know, it really is a, a news feed or a ticker 
that people can monitor. And with that focus, I think has come new sets of behaviours. You know, very, very constrained messaging, but very focused messaging, very, very timely. And we've seen the impact of that in the political landscape and the commercial landscape um, around sports stars and sporting events. The, the 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 impact has been, I think, quite pervasive. Are there trends happening in the sort of commercial media world that we probably yet to see in Australia? Um, what, what we see at Nielsen is that the behaviour of the Australian consumer in adopting new technologies is amongst the most advanced in the world. So a lot of the things that are happening in Australia are actually leading the rest of the world. Certainly Australia is right up there with the US consumer in terms of taking on whether it be you know, the adoption of the, the PC, then the tablet, then the smartphone, social, uh, social networks and thinking about how the, all these things work together. The Australian consumer is right up there. This might end with um, radio measurement. Broadcasters around the world have been looking for sort of something that would sort of, you know, really give them a, some, some insights they think are as sort of concrete as the people at TV get. Because of the mobile medium, it's, it's been a challenge. They've had the electronic measurement in the US, but it hasn't quite got to, to where it, what it promised. Do you think there's anything on the horizon there? Yeah, I think, well, I think when you step back from radio as an advertising proposition, it's a very, very strong one. Particularly, it's timely, it's unique, it has, it, it, it gets privileged access to hard to reach demographics, particularly people commuting to and from work. So as an advertising uh, proposition, it's very, very strong. It's been hit, uh, particularly in somewhere, somewhere like the US, by automotive softness in automotive sales and softness on the retail high streets, but it's starting to come roaring back and I think the promise is, is really there. The challenge for radio will be to show uh, how it interacts with other forms of media in the, in the marketing mix, firstly, and secondly, how radio drives purchase behaviour, whether that be for quick service restaurants, whether that be for, um, uh, for automotive sales or for other types of retailers. That's where radio uh, should and, and needs to focus and that's where, how we're helping uh, uh, our radio clients. Um, and part of that will be better forms of measurement as we go, but more important is to help that advertising sales proposition. Coming up on Media Week, Delicious magazine celebrates its 10th anniversary.